Hi, I'm Matt from Motorsport Electronics, and in this video, we're going to cover a brief deep dive of the ignition driver on the ME platform. So starting at the top we have our ignition mode and on this particular car you can see we are set to off. This means regardless of inputs or outputs we will not fire the ignition coils based on software control. We can still fire them from the test driver but in terms of ECU derived outputs, for example if we had synchronisation and we wanted to fire a spark plug, it will not happen. There are several other modes and I'll go through one at a time. Distributor fires only coil one. In this mode, only coil one on our outputs will ever trigger. If we're on a four cylinder engine, every 180 degrees of engine cycle, remembering there are 720 degrees to a four stroke cycle, it will fire the coil. It won't care about which coil it fires, it will only fire coil one. Tap, 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 tap as the engine cycles. This will typically then go via a distributor to route the sparks to the correct cylinder at the correct time. Next up we have Wasted Spark, a fairly typical and simple uh, ignition system mode. Because we consider engines, and I'll deal with four cylinder in this case, the two outside pistons will be up together. Which means, whilst one is under compression and one is pushing out exhaust, we can fire both spark plugs at the same time and one of them will be effective. Next up, the two inside ones come up together and we'll fire those. So every 180 degrees we fire outside then inside, and that's called wasted spark. We will need to have coil one and coil two on a four cylinder, and obviously coil three on a six, and up to coil four on a V8, set up in our output system. Wasted spark cops. If we are running coil on plug, and we have wired their triggers individually, for example, on this four cylinder engine, I have wired COP1 to coil 1, COP2 to coil 2, COP3 to coil 3 and COP4 to coil 4. I may still want to run only in wasted spark. Perhaps I don't have a cam working as yet, so I can't fully sequentially track the engine, in which case I can use wasted spark COPs. This will divide up based on the firing order, and on this one it will fire 1 and 4 together, and then 3 and 2 together. So it will fire those channels linked based on our firing order, distributed over our coil on plug setup. A very useful way, as I say, if you're not using a cam uh, pattern, to use coil on plugs. Finally, we have fully sequential. Fully sequential will require accurate tracking of at least one cam to fully determine the engine's position over 720 degrees. With that in place, it will fire the, it, the coils every 180 degrees in order based on the firing order. Firing cylinder one, then three, then four, then two, in this particular example. Note if you have cam after sync or after RPM, such that the ECU only uses uh, the crankshaft sensor until a certain RPM is met, see our deep dive on the engine driver for more information on that one, it will start in wasted spark mode cops automatically and switch over once full sync is obtained. Coil rest state is greyed out and set to normal uh, a standard. There may be some very specific use cases where you need to change that to inverted, but that would be something you would contact ME support for. And moving on to coil type. Now the ME wiring platform is able to support either IGBT or passive coils. These are simply coils of wire which have 12 volts coming in one side and then directly connected from the other side of that coil to the ECU and all we do is switch it to ground to dwell that coil. It's a high power output mode and the ECU has those drivers built in as standard. We would use IGBT mode in that particular use case. If we are using active coils such as COPS on a K20 or a, a coil pack with an inbuilt igniter or ignition module such as on an MX-5 then we would use TTL active in this mode, the very same pin on the ECU, instead of switching to ground to drive the coil, will output a 5 volt pulse to dwell the coil, a logic level pulse. Moving on, the fixed fire and fixed fire advanced modes work in tandem. 
When fixed fire is set to no, the EC will work in a normal sense and use all of the ignition table and the trims to work out our final ignition firing angle. At this moment, you can see it's set to 10. If I head over to the map and change a particular area of the map, let's say to 20, and go back to our start tab, we will see that if the engine was running or looking at that particular spot in time, it's now trying to fire at 20 degrees. When we first install our engine, and we first installed our ECU to that, and perhaps we fitted an aftermarket trigger wheel, or we're not sure on the position, we would need to configure our trigger offset. And to do that, we would use a timing light. So what we can do is set our fixed fire instead to fire always at a fixed number. If I press yes, I've set it to 10, and you can see our number up here has dropped to 10. This means, regardless of all the other information on the ECU in terms of trims, offsets, um, the, the base tables, perhaps you've got some knock systems going on, it will only ever fire at 10 degrees or what it believes is 10 degrees. With the timing lights in situ then on the crank pulley and TDC marked, we can then adjust our trigger offset as we crank the engine to ensure that when the ECU thinks it's firing at 10 degrees, it physically is. And we do have a further video on uh, triggering and base timing setup as well. So be sure to check that out. That's the ignition driver covered. Uh, stay tuned for some more deep dives.